Introduction to Animal Agriculture, Minnesota Cropping Systems and Their Environmental Impacts. This lesson provides some basic information on the relationship between animals, crops, and the environment. The state of Minnesota can be divided into several agro-eco regions. This map shows how different types of livestock production play out across the state. Note that the shading represents the predominant animals grown in these areas and that cattle refers to both beef and dairy animals. Crops are also dominant in certain geographic areas. The different areas have evolved through the years, a result of what each region grows best, market trends, and the placement of support industries including milk processing and meatpacking plants. Historically, there's been a very tight relationship between crops grown and livestock produced, but as transportation systems continue to improve, it's become easier to move feed to the animals and move animals to areas best suited for them. Nutrients, manure, and the environment. There are 16 elements essential for all crops. Most soils already have micronutrients required for plant growth. If needed, secondary nutrients will be added, such as calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. Primary nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, are almost always applied to the field to aid plant growth. Of these, nitrogen and phosphorus have the largest impact on water quality. Manure is a good source of primary, secondary, and micronutrients. To understand the impact animals and crops have on the environment, it's important to know how nutrients travel through the environment. Nitrogen is probably the most transient nutrient. It can be produced by soybeans, alfalfa, and other legumes. Nitrogen can also be added to the soil in the form of fertilizer or manure. In the form of ammonia, nitrogen can be lost in a gas form through volatilization. In nitrate form, it can leach through the soil profile and into the groundwater. Nitrate can also be converted into nitrogen gas and be lost to the atmosphere through denitrification. Nitrogen is also removed from the soil when the plant or grain from the plant is harvested. The phosphorus cycle is a little more simple. It's added to the soil from fertilizer, manure, or crop residue. Phosphorus is removed from the soil by plant use and harvesting. It sticks easily to soil and moves with it when erosion occurs. Crops and Crop Rotations The major legume crops grown in Minnesota include alfalfa, soybeans, and field peas. Legumes can take their needed nitrogen, or N, straight out of the air. This is called nitrogen fixation. At the same time, they'll take it from the soil if it's available. Non-legumes are plants that do not have the ability to fix nitrogen. Common non-legumes in Minnesota include corn, wheat, various grasses, and sugar beets. Nitrogen's transient nature often makes it the limiting nutrient in the production of these crops. In other words, plant growth is stunted because the N is not available while all other needed nutrients are. In most cases, the same crop is not grown on the same field year after year. This is known as crop rotation. Rotation reduces crop diseases and helps control insects and weeds. It also improves soil fertility and structure, which allows the soils to hold more moisture. Corn and soybeans are the most prevalent crops in Minnesota, and they're often rotated between each other in a two-year crop rotation. Both of these crops are annuals, meaning they're planted and harvested in the same year. Well adapted to the Minnesota climate, corn and soybeans need lots of water. These crops work well together because soybeans leave some nitrogen behind to be used by next year's corn crop. Unfortunately, some insects have adapted to this two-year corn-soybean rotation. In general, a corn-soybean rotation requires large amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus. This is good for getting the most out of manure, but the high rates of nutrient application increase the potential for nitrogen to be leached into the groundwater. It's interesting to note that soybeans have the ability to fix nitrogen if it's available in the soil but they will also use nitrogen if it is available. Proper timing of fertilizer application is critical to reduce the risk of nitrogen loss to a corn crop. 
95% of the plant's nitrogen needs occur after the plants are too tall to get in the field with manure spreading equipment. Nitrogen is usually applied before or soon after planting. It needs to stay in the soil until the plant can use it. Meanwhile, the N may be lost through leaching deep into the soil profile or to the atmosphere through volatilization. Grown mostly for human consumption, wheat is another major annual crop in Minnesota. Most wheat is planted in the spring and harvested in the fall. Some varieties can be planted in late fall and are known as winter wheat. Because wheat is a grass, it requires less nutrients than corn. It also uses less water on a per acre basis. Wheat and its genetic neighbors, barley and oats, are often grown in a rotation with soybeans, sugar beets, canola, or sunflowers. Small grains will create a better ground cover than corn or soybeans. This helps reduce the risk of soil erosion. Because grains need less N, the potential to pollute groundwater is less as well. Alfalfa is a perennial legume that can be grown in a rotation with corn and oats. One of the primary feeds for dairy cattle, the alfalfa crop grows for three or four years without replanting. It's generally planted in early spring or late summer with a companion crop such as oats. Because alfalfa is a legume, there is no need to add nitrogen. Alfalfa is a large user of water, but because of its deep root system, it can survive periods of mild drought. Despite its ability to create its own nitrogen, alfalfa will remove large amounts of N from the soil if it's there. Alfalfa also removes some phosphorus from the ground. Because of the good ground cover, there is little risk of soil erosion. Growing alfalfa is encouraged in southeast Minnesota and other areas where the land is hilly. Peas, dry beans, sugar beets, and sweet corn are also grown in Minnesota. Planted for human consumption, these are often grown in rotation with other crops as a way to break the insect or disease cycles. Agro-eco regions evolve and change continuously as producers adapt to current market demands. Each crop and livestock production system carries its own unique economic and environmental risks. Properly managing manure includes understanding the nutrient cycles and the interactions of crops and animals. If you have additional questions, please contact your local or regional University of Minnesota Extension Office.